Hello everyone, welcome to another video. In today's video, we would be working with derivatives of power function. This is the AI Maths SL exam paper one short question. So let's continue and see what we are going to do. So we see in this problem, we have several functions and we need to find out the derivative of all of these functions. So let's continue and break down the questions. This is our question number one, where we see a der uh, an equation where y equals to 7x cubed plus 5x squared plus 2x plus 3. And as you know, whenever we take a derivative, we take one number out from the power and we multiply the coefficient with the power so 7 times 3 would be 21 x square plus 2 times 5 is 10 it would become 10 x plus 2 Now moving on with the next one, we are going to take the derivative again. So there is a power 3 on top of x. So that 3 and this 3 in the bottom, they both cancel out with each other. And we would be just left with 7x squared. Same this 2 and this 2 cancels out. So we are just left with minus 5x. plus one third and since four doesn't have anything with it so we don't we don't have to worry about uh that part moving on to the next question we have again a cube and this three and this three cancels out with each other so it's pretty much similar to the previous question the only difference is that now uh instead of one on the top it has x on the top so the answer for that question is actually pretty much the same as the last question as nothing changed the only thing that was changed was there was an x on the top in the last question in this one the x is written on the side instead of on the top moving on to the next problem one does not have any variable nothing is next to it this is 2 to the power of x to the power of minus 1 i can write it down like this So it's going to become negative x, negative 6x. All right. Let's move forward to the next question. It's one third. So it's going to become minus two fifth x to the power of minus two minus ten minus two, which in short is going to become. x 
and uh, this is going to become minus six x to the power minus three and seven in the bottom. This square would also be in the bottom. Now the next problem. I'm just making it, uh, it's a little bigger so we have more space to work on other things. Okay, so for this one, we need to distribute this x square. So it's going to, our equation is going to become x square plus 2x plus 3. And in that case, is going to be x two x plus two is x to the power of half So here we have x to the power of one half and we have x to the power of three by two. So what should we do in this problem? Can we add both of these numbers up? You know that there is a there is a rule that if there is if the bases are getting multiplied with each other only then we can you know add up the powers so what should we do now can we add up the powers here no we cannot so how can we solve this for now is there any way we can solve this or we would just leave it as it is Any thoughts? Yes, so no chance we can solve it, right? Because there is there is a power here, right? So We will multiply this half here, it would become one, two. And when you subtract the one from a half, it's actually what? It's a, actually it's going to become to the power one half. And for the next one is one third x to the power two out of Right now, let's move forward to the next question. Here we have another now. Let's continue to the next problem. It's the cube root of x plus. 
uh, not cube root like a cube uh, root and a cube of x plus cube root of x squared. So this is how we would break it down. And uh, this is going to become x to the power 2 out of 3. So when we would take the derivative of that, this 3 out of 2 would come here. And uh, the power of x, if we would take away 1 from, uh, if you would take away 1 out from, Two out, 3 out of 2, then it's going to give us the remainder uh, as yes, so its remainder would turn out to be x to the power 1 out of 2. Because 3 out of 2 minus 1 is 1 out of 2. Plus, this would become, 2 out of 3 would come in the coefficient. And uh, because it's 2 out of 3 minus 1, so it's going to become 1 third in the bottom. So in short, since we don't write a square root in the bottom, so that's why we are keeping it in the power form. So we can just uh, leave it as it is. We don't have to do anything else from here onward. Now, uh, let's move on to the next problem. I just wanted to quickly erase this from here. Now we have a fraction. And as you see, we have a big number on the top and uh, just x squared in the bottom. So what? should we do in order to do the this question so this one is not as simple as the other one since we there is a fraction so here we would use the quotient rule let me write it down here in the text form I'm just trying to see how add something in the form of and here so I can take yes it's called the quotient rule I'm putting down the formula of the quotient rule here so is something like So let's say we have on the top, we call it f of x, and on the bottom, we call it g of x. So first, you would write down whatever you have in the bottom. Let's say g of x is in the bottom. So g of x would stay the same. I'll write it down here as well. On the top, it's f of x. And in the bottom, we have g of x. As we have a uh, g of x, we would write it down as it is, and then we will take a derivative d out of dx of the numerator, which is 1 plus x plus x squared. And then we would put a minus sign, and then we would write down f of x as it is and we would take a derivative of g of and uh, you must be wondering that what happened to the denominator so in the denominator whatever you have you would take a derivative take a square of it. and one more thing my bad I actually started uh, solving the question along with it here instead of this it's actually I was writing down the formula so I ended up uh, putting the real question inside so here it's actually right 
Now let's move forward by putting these values inside the formula. So as you can see, g of x was x squared, so we would just keep x squared here. And in place of f of x, we will put down the equation that I wrote earlier, g out of dx. which is 1 plus x plus x squared minus, you would write it down again, 1 plus x plus x squared. And we would take a derivative of g of x which is x squared in the denominator g of x we will take a square of it so it was x squared and we will take a square of it now let's move forward it would become 2x plus 1 We'll open it up. And uh, it would become 2x. Or we can keep it as it is and uh, we can multiply. Uh, these two parentheses first and then we can move on from there and in the bottom it would be x to the power 4. Now let's move ahead and uh, it would become 2x cubed plus x square minus 2x minus 2x square plus we uh plus it will be two x cube not actually a plus because there is a minus outside so that would be uh, just a minus two x minus two x square and the minus 2x cubed as well. So you must be happy here because uh, the higher power is again getting cancelled out. And in the bottom we have x. So this got out with this. What we are what we are ending up with is minus 2x squared. Plus 2. So let's see what we are going to get in the end. <clears throat> I'm sorry about that. So as you can see, this uh, would become just minus x squared, right? And we have minus 2x. In the end, that is left out. And we have x4 in the bottom. So what we can do, we can take out x as common from the top. If we take minus x out as common, and there is x cubed. And then from here onwards, you can see that you can take minus x out as common. And what would be inside? It would be just x plus 2 now. Right. So this x and then there is a, a 4 in the bottom, x 
to the power of 4. So you see this x, we cancel out that power on the top. So we would be just left out with 3. So our final answer is going to be minus x minus 2. And in the bottom, it would be x to the power of 3. And that is the derivative of number likewise if you we have to do the same thing in the next one we would have to likewise so this is what all you got to do so you would pretty much do the similar thing in the next question you will take that derivative you would uh, label the top as f of x and the bottom as g of x and you would use the quotient rule formula and uh, while using that if you can see the quotient rule says that this would stay the same so it would become 2x square and uh, everything Maybe I can move it down in the bottom because uh, there is like very small space left here. So I'd rather move down 3 plus 5x. So the question is 3 plus 5x plus 7x square. Can scroll back up to see if it's the right thing. That's 3 plus 5x plus 7x squared, and in the bottom it is 2x squared. So, like we did the quotient root formula above, it's the same thing. g of x, which is 2x squared. So, the formula is g of x times f of x, so you would just put down the f of x here, which is the derivative of f of x. So I'm just putting down the derivative in the correct order. So it would become 14x plus 5 times 2x plus 5. And according to the quotient rule, you would use the minus sign. So here is the minus sign minus f of x so you would write down the f of x as it is which is 3 plus 5x plus 7x square along with you would take a derivative of the denominator which is 2x squared, so the derivative of the denominator would be just 4x now. And in the bottom, you got to take a square of the denominator, so that would become 4x. Now we got to simplify it. If you see, we would distribute this 2x squared as so this, so it would 14 times 2 is 28. Three plus an x square. You would do the same. You would distribute this four x to this. That would become twelve x. Four times three is twelve. So minus four times five is twenty. So it would be twenty x minus twenty eight. So here comes the happy news that if you would see the cube is already gone. No more worries about the cube anymore.
And here, if you see, we can also take out two access commands from the top. So what we have now, five x. So the four on the top would cancel out the four in the bottom. So we are just left with what the x is also gone. It's five x minus sixteen, and in the denominator it's two x to the power. And that is our answer. So I hope you understood how to find all the derivatives of the expressions. We use different ways. We have uh, we use the quotient rule here. We had some thirds that we dealt with. So I hope you understood. If you have any questions related to the derivative of the functions, feel free to reach out to me from the comment section, and I'll get back to you. All right. See you in the next video.